I really like the way the market closed today. I do like the way uh, the technology names uh, got off the bottom of their channels, started to reclaim levels or about to reclaim levels for tomorrow's session. And at least we know which way the wind is gonna blow for tomorrow's session. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com nightly wrap up show. Everybody's doing a uh, well. Uh, weird day today, very, very odd day. So uh, I came into today's session pretty, pretty much like I came in yesterday and the day before. I was sell bias, right? I was sell bias in the market. And if you look at how the market reacted, I would say the first three hours of the day, there was a lot of soul searching, okay? Um, Q's took out this area, this uh, 374 20s level we talked about the last couple of days and started moving lower. And it spent the next, I would say three, four hours fighting back over control over this 324 level. Why was that over this 374 level? Why was that important? Because that represented a 20 day moving average. And that 20 day moving average, if it would have really got taken over by the bear control, you would have seen a really aggressive move back uh, back to the 50 day moving average. So the first three hours or so, they were literally going reclaimed, defended, broke, reclaimed, defended, broke, and up and down, up and down off that 374 level. And you're saying to yourself, and you're watching the price action, you're saying, well, the bulls are just being carried right now. They're, you know, it's like it's like an old expression. I used it today in the webinar. It's like that uh, expression from boxing when, when one opponent uh, carries the other for like two, three rounds before they knock him out. So it felt like the bears were like carrying the bulls for like the first two, three hours and just like toying with them and messing with them and saying, look, eventually you're going to pull the plug. There's nothing rallying. It, 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 nothing is rallying. Nothing's participating. Everything's standing in a very, very tight channel. And I, I, I was making my list. I was literally making my list. It was around lunchtime and I had a really good list if we closed the week for some phenomenal premium setups to the downside. So I went to lunch, right? When I went to lunch, the queues were at uh, three, I mean, 374. They were literally the whole day, right? You could, you could literally see it. They were literally the whole day. These are three candles all around the 74 area. You can see, the, especially the last three. And once lunchtime came, I came back, you know, 45 minutes, an hour later, the queues were up $2. So what went from ideally a really good premium scenario of the queues breaking down for the next business day, right? For tomorrow's session, uh, it all went out of nowhere from breakdown to, oh my God, look what just happened. The bulls defended, they started moving higher, right? Right off the lows, they started moving higher and they took control back of the five day moving average. That's incredibly impressive considering we, we had a hit list uh, for tomorrow as of noon, uh, that we were going to be 100% sell bias and everything was ready to, to implode. Instead, I came back, everything starts rallying off the bottom. And not only do stocks start rallying off the bottom, they start slowly reclaiming levels. So if you look at names today, for example, like a Google, and this is one of the, one of the very last pivots. We'll, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. This thing took over, not only reclaimed the five, reclaimed the 10 day moving average. And now it has this really, really aggressive base. So for all you guys who are swinging this thing uh, from that uh, 2870 pivot, it looks really, really good. If this thing starts confirming uh, this, you know, 2900, this thing could really go back uh, to the upper Bollinger Band. But you start in name and seeing names like Google wake up, uh, a name like Amazon, right? Obviously not out of the woods, but at least you see Amazon reclaim back the five day moving average. And if it confirms it tomorrow, this thing's gonna wake up. You saw a name like Tesla that had this really magnificent washout a couple of days ago, uh, reversal a couple of days ago, it too reclaimed the five day moving average. And you started looking at names one by one by one into the close. And you say to yourself, this is why we play the game, right? This is why our opinions don't matter. This is why we say all the time, don't anticipate, right? Don't anticipate, don't forecast. Let the market tell you which way it's gonna blow. And for the first three hours, it was very, very slow. Like in other words, if you didn't catch 
a couple of pivots early out in the morning, there was nothing for us. There was literally nothing for us for like three hours of the day. And then after one o'clock, after two o'clock, when usually the market starts to contract ranges, these ranges started slowly expanding and a lot of technology names are really looking very good for tomorrow. Now, again, anything could happen overnight, right? But it, it really does show you how, how humbling it is in this business if you try to guess, right? If you try to guess and try to outsmart the market, because again, at noon, I was 100% sell bias. And you look at today on the close, you say to yourself, wow, there's a lot of really good looking longs uh, for tomorrow's setup. So uh, again, if you're a new trader, and, and again, I, I get it, you want to be right, right? Your ego is there subconsciously. You want to show everybody how smart you are, but your ego, right? And the idea of how smart you are is going to cost you and really derail your career uh, very, very quickly to let the price action move on. And the, the hardest part about this morning session was uh, if you were trying to buy or sell a stock, was watching the queues being defended off the 20 day moving average. You can't go short as the queues are being defended and you can't go along because you know in a, any second they could collapse. So we were literally stuck pretty much for the first three hours uh, between a rock and a hard place uh, going into tomorrow. But at least now going into tomorrow's session, we have some really good value setups. You got some mega cap names. You got some meme names, right? There's only a couple of meme names out there. Uh, you have some Na NASDAQ 100 names. Tesla looks pretty solid uh, as well. NVIDIA looks solid as well. Microsoft looks solid as well. So again, is tomorrow going to be one of these premium sessions that we talk about in technology, the no brainer. Uh, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to overanalyze. No, but I, I, I really like the way the market closed today. I do like the way uh, the technology names uh, got off the bottom of their channels, started reclaiming levels or about to reclaim levels for tomorrow's session. And at least we know which way the wind is going to blow for tomorrow's session. And sometimes, you know, when you when you're trading full time or even trading part time, whatever the case may be, sometimes the collecting data of your career is very, very important. So I don't want to use today as maybe taking one step back to taking 12 steps forward to tomorrow. But this was a very good necessary step. So if you found yourself today being very, very inactive, because again, the first three hours, that is your meat and potatoes of the day. That is your window. So if you miss your window, you're not going to start going gangbusters in the afternoon. Remember people, you know, there's an old saying is, um, I gave back my day, right? Nobody gives back their day in the morning. People give back their days in the afternoon. So if you missed your window today in the afternoon, 99.9% .9 of the chance, you're probably not going to get anything going in the afternoon. But today kind of played out a little Little bit differently stock started waking up and that is a good probably a high probability um resolution kind of going into uh tomorrow's session so here's some some names that i do like for tomorrow look at gamestop i know like i said there's meme names right look at gamestop again it's not something i would lead with usually but again i like how gamestop today reclaimed the five to ten day moving average if it starts confirming this channel here and again that's a big if but if GameStop starts confirming this channel here, I mean, look how much room you have. You do have a legitimate big average to range in the stock. And again, if there's an opening range high that confirms this upper range, yeah, this thing is tradable. This thing is definitely tradable. It's not the crazy uh, GameStop that we saw, you know, going in $80 intervals. This is actually tradable right now. It has a little bit of liquidity. You just have to have the common sense to figure out where the, 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 the sneaky channels are. And this one's not even that sneaky. It's just show, showing you the whole range uh, where it is. So I definitely want to keep an eye on that for, as well. Uh, Fang, right? Nothing to do with nothing to do with Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google. It's just Fang, right? It's it's, it's I think it's an energy name. Look how good this 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 look look how good this chart looks, right? You have the ch top of the channel here. You have the top of the channel here. If this thing confirms this whole macro daily channel, I mean, look how much room you have in the name. Again, I don't think I've ever traded Fang. Um, Ever in my life, but hey, look at this chart. It, look, it looks like Marriott, right? Look at Marriott's chart. You guys remember Marriott's chart? It stopped this orange line. Again, sometimes you have to simplify technical analysis, and the next day you took it out, and the next day you took it out, right? So look at Fang, exactly the same thing. It's a mirror image. It stopped right at this orange line. So if it confirms tomorrow, you could get a move up as well. Um, Microsoft, right? Announced a $60 billion buyback. 
uh, tomorrow of uh, today. There was a you know cute little pivot. That's the best way of saying it. There was a cute little pivot this morning on it. But now it's setting up a little bit macro. So if there is a rally today, and if there's a rally tomorrow in the market, and especially technology gets highlighted, hey, Mr. Softy uh, looks right. It looks right technically, and obviously it's right fundamentally for all you guys who love fundamentals. Sixty billion dollar buyback is not exactly something to sneeze at. And the moral of the story is you want to go with the leader. So let's talk about today's session again. As you can possibly imagine. He didn't have 500 pivots because, again, the market was just sitting there, just did nothing and kind of having this battle royale at, at, uh, at, uh, three, uh, at 324 of the queues. So let's talk about today's session and see exactly what happened and what didn't happen. Number one, congratulations for all you guys who are still in Zoom. Here's a perfect example. Again, we reiterated the point a couple of sessions ago that when a stock loses its uh, earnings low after it gets blown up, it starts a multi-day cycle of selling. Uh, this was the pivot yesterday, 288 is the earnings low. It can flush. Today was a continuation, 281. If it builds below, it can go lower. And again, it's just drifting lower, right? It's just drifting lower. Here is the earnings lows. Uh, stock stopped at 277. Below 277, this thing's going to go to 65. So again, just kind of Again, for all you new trades, you should be trying to absorb as much data as possible. So kind of put that cheat note like on a sticky pad or something. Just write this down. If a stock takes out its earnings low and closes below its earnings low, there's a high probability that it's just going to drift, you know, two, three, four, maybe even, even five days uh, in a row. And that's exactly what's happening to Zoom. That's exactly what's happening to Dollar Tree. Remember Dollar Tree? Same thing, right? It took out its lows. 89.64 and went down to 87 today. Again, same thing, close blow, uh, it's earnings low and it's just kind of drifting in the linear line. So again, it's a really, really good play uh, for all you guys who are starting out trading, something to uh, to really you know try to focus on, especially earnings season. Uh, Qs, again, here's the whole point, defended back to back to back to back to back days, right? 324 20s, if it builds below, can flush. They actually did flush it, right? At one point, and this is why I thought this market's gonna completely implode for tomorrow. So. Q's, they took out this uh, 324 level and went down about a dollar, right? Nothing big. And then they came right back up and for the next three hours sat there at 324. And this is kind of when you figured out, hey, by the way, maybe the market is not that horrible, but wait a minute, watch them sell it off into the, into the close. That was at noon. Now I am <laughs> by bias for tomorrow. Again, how quickly things uh, change. Uh, TTD never confirmed 69. Uh, TDOC never confirmed 131. Uh, Tesla finally got above the 755 area. I like it. And I think, um, I don't know if it's going to go tomorrow. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Cross your fingers. But at least Tesla uh, is looking really, really good. And people turn around and say, well, don't you know Kathy's selling, you know, selling uh, $60 million worth of Tesla? Yeah, and? right? Who cares, right? It's like, it doesn't make a difference who's buying, who's selling. Technical analysis is technical analysis. This is the same person who bought, uh, you know, coin at 400, right? Who cares? There's buyers and sellers every single day. The fact that she sold $60 million worth of stock and the stock put in its highest close in this formation in the last five days, well, what does that tell you, right? The buyers are overwhelming the sellers at those levels. They cleaned her up and yada, yada, yada. There's a good possibility of higher appreciation. So yeah, it doesn't really can make a difference who's buying, who's selling. Um, so yeah, yesterday, uh, 582 uh, got down to 575. Uh, it, stopped, it never went below 575. Uh, Microsoft 304.30 uh, needs to build. Uh, quick pop, quick pop, but it's setting up uh, macro prices. Uh, quick pop this morning. Here's the, uh, here's the 40 right here. It did ramp about a buck. And then it came in and it finally rallied to the close. But what I like about Microsoft, it didn't give you a definitive yes, but it's not that far away from a definitive macro yes. So we want to definitely keep an eye on that as well. Uh, and again, I, and I, we, we talked about this. I go, hey, stay patient today. I could see a scenario that they hold up the tape most of the day, they represent strike, and then pull the rug. That's what they did. The only thing I anticipate, they're going to pull, pull it right back um, and kind of show real, relative strength towards uh, lunchtime again, something we didn't see. Uh, Microsoft taking the way up, blah blah blah. Uh, nice move on Zoom, went to 77. Uh, Q's went down like about a buck, nothing big before um, you know it kind of got there. And we talked about this. I said, Listen, I saw this stalemate action 
coming from a mile away. Again, guys, remember, when, when, when bulls and bears are trying to take over a big macro level, for example, the 20-day moving average, it's not going to be just as simple as, well, if the stock takes up this, it's going to go. There's a war, right? There's a bidding war and there's a, there's a selling war. And whoever cleans up the other is eventually going to win. And it took three hours, but the bulls finally got the job done. And this was actually the biggest mover of the day. Uh, Google potential swing, uh, 2870. And Google went nuts. It really went nuts. Congratulations to you guys who are long Google. So here is the 2870. Right, 2870, put up a $20 candle uh, into the close. And now it's just one inch away, or one candle away, uh, from confirming macro range to go back uh, into the 2950. So again, at least we got today out of the way. It didn't cost us any mental equity. It definitely didn't cost us any uh, financial equity. And most important is we're staying sharp. We're staying focused. We see exactly what's going on, not the market that we want, but the market that we have. But at least we are set up on a lot of really good channels for tomorrow. The key is for the bulls not to drop the ball and start confirming levels. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.